Charles Gillard, age 51, lived in the Austin Township of Michigan with his wife Dawn. Dawn Gillard, age 40, loved cooking and learning new recipes, so others could enjoy them. She spent her free time going to football games and keeping up with friends on social media. Being a mother was the highlight of her life. She was always taking the children on nature walks, and sparking their interest in new and exciting things. Dawn worked as a housekeeper at Best Western Plus in Traverse City. Dawn was married previously but the relationship ended. The couple had three children together. Their identities will remain anonymous for privacy reasons. Charles and Dawn had three beautiful children together, six-year-old Caitlin Gillard, four-year-old Ronald Gillard, and three-year-old Joshua Gillard. Caitlin was nicknamed Dolly. She enjoyed wearing SWAT t-shirts and playing cops and robbers. She loved coloring and painting. She also loved playing with her dolls and dressing up in girly clothes. Her favorite pastime was playing with her siblings outside. Dolly attended Morley Standwood Community Schools. Ronald was nicknamed Bugs. He was always moving. He enjoyed playing outside, riding his bike and adored his little brother Josh. The only time he stopped moving was if Paw Patrol was on, or he was deep in thought playing with his little hot wheels. He was outgoing and energetic. Joshua was nicknamed Pluto. He absolutely loved being outside, and proved that by always being the first one outside. He enjoyed telling stories, riding his big wheel, playing with his match cars, and eating mac and cheese with his big brother Bugs. The family of five lived in their home at 180th Avenue south of Johnson Road in the Austin Township of Macosta County, Michigan. Austin Township is located about 50 miles north of Grand Rapids. On May 27 in 2022 police responded to a shooting in the Austin Township at 2.30 p.m., they were advised that a male subject had a gun, and shots had been fired inside the residence. When police arrived at the home they found six-year-old Caitlin, four-year-old Ronald, three-year-old Joshua, and 40-year-old Dawn Gillard all dead from apparent gunshot injuries. Further into the home they located Charles Gillard with a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. He was immediately rushed by ambulance to Spectrum Health Big Rapids Hospital, then later transferred by air flight to Butterworth Hospital in Grand Rapids. Charles Gillard suffered horrific injuries to his face but is expected to survive. Macosta County Sheriff Brian Miller said in a public statement, with our first responders, almost everyone at the scene had children of their own. I can tell you they took it very hard. To have something so tragic happen in your community is heartbreaking. No matter how much you prepare yourself for something like this in our line of work, it never is easy. It sticks with you. Our hearts go out to the remaining family members, who have to go on with their lives not having their loved ones part of it. He added, I am speechless, and really have no answer to why and how something like this can happen. We have a strong community, who has always been there for one another during times of need. The prosecutor's office made a public statement on the charges against Charles Gillard. The Macosta County Prosecuting Attorney's Office has issued charges against Charles Gillard for the deaths of Dawn Gillard and her three children, Caitlin, age six, Ronnie, age four, and Joshua, age three, from an incident occurring May 27, 2022 in Austin Township, Macosta County. Charles Gillard will be arraigned on the following charges. Count one, homicide, open murder. Count two, felony firearm. Count three, homicide, open murder. Count four, felony firearm. Count five, homicide, open murder. Count six, felony firearm. Count seven, homicide, open murder. Count eight, felony firearm. Count nine, child abuse in the first degree. Count 10, child abuse in the first degree. Count 11, child abuse in the first degree. Count 12, Child abuse, first degree, committed in the presence of another child. Count 13, child
child abuse, first degree, committed in the presence of another child. Count 14, discharge of a firearm in a building causing death, and count 15, felony firearm. Each of the charged offenses, except for the felony firearm counts, are punishable by a maximum of life imprisonment. Felony firearm is punishable by two years, consecutively with and preceding any term of imprisonment that might be imposed for the felony convictions. These are allegations and charges only. Charles Gillard, or Charles Gillard is presumed to be innocent and will retain that presumption until he is proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt in the court of law. At Mr. Gillard's arraignment, the court will schedule a probable cause conference and preliminary examination. We expect that to happen in the next couple weeks as his prognosis with the University of Michigan is good. The Macosta County Prosecuting Attorney's Office would like to thank the Macosta County Sheriff's Office, the Big Rapids Department of Public Safety, the Michigan State Police, the Department of Health and Human Services, the Macosta County Emergency Medical Services, the Morton Township Fire Rescue, and the Macosta Fire Township Rescue for their work on this investigation so that we could issue these charges today. Thank you. Haley Salisbury, the daughter of Dawn Gillard, and half-sister to the younger children, told reporters, I am in total shock. I am so devastated. In one of her TikTok videos she directed a comment to her stepfather by saying, I will find a way to speak to you before you die in prison you disgusting, sickening thing. Roger Coles, superintendent for Morley Stanwood Elementary Schools, said, We all grieve in our own way. News and situations like this stir a great many feelings and emotions in all of us, myself included. We all handle them differently, not better or worse, just differently. He continued, there are a lot of emotions to deal with and to process as a result of this terrible loss. The community needs to mourn, to weep, to pray, and to begin healing. Please do not be afraid to reach out and ask for help if your children, or you, need someone to talk to. Do not hesitate to call someone if you find your children or family struggling with this horrible loss that has gripped our community. The community held a memorial for the victims at the Morley Stanwood football field on Monday July 1st at 7 p.m. Candles were lit in remembrance of Dawn, Caitlin, Ronald, and Joshua. A GoFundMe campaign was created to support funeral costs. It reads, any family that loses members to violence suffer immeasurably. Deaths so horrific should not be a financial burden on any surviving members. Nearly $15,000 was raised to help the family. Charles Gillard was in the University of Michigan hospital in critical condition for over a month for his injuries. He was arrested once the hospital discharged him. Charles Gillard was officially charged on June 15, but wasn't arrested until June 28 in 2022. He was booked at the Macosta County Sheriff's Office Jail. He was arraigned in the 77th District Court on multiple felony charges in association with the homicides. He is being held without bond. Funeral services were held at 11 a.m. on July 9th at the Northland United Methodist Church in Standwood, Michigan. According to studies family annihilators who murder their families then go on to commit suicide or attempt suicide share commonalities with others committing the same type of crimes. A few of those commonalities is low self-control and a history of domestic violence. Approximately 30% of relationships with a pre-existing history of domestic violence end in murder-suicide. However, most researchers agree this number is extremely low compared to actual numbers because only 25% of domestic violence is reported. After interviewing family friends after these tragic events they feel the number is more around 70%. Another commonality, is a history of usually untreated depression or other mental illness. A study carried out in 2016 of 60 murder-suicide cases found that 62% had been diagnosed previously with depression, and one-third of those perpetrators had been prescribed antidepressants around the time of the crimes. 
The study also found that about 25% had attempted suicide at least once, and many numerous times in the past. The study also found that less than half sought professional mental treatment. The study found that the younger family annihilator who carries out murder then attempts or successfully commits suicide has usually been controlling, possessive, and abusive. He's typically disrespectful, and entirely dependent on the relationship. Many have a history of alcohol or drug abuse and jealousy. The younger family annihilator typically carries out his crime when the relationship fails or is about to end. The study found that the middle-aged family annihilator who carries out the murders of his family then attempts suicide is usually facing some sort of personal crisis that leads to embarrassment, shame and eventually rage. A triggering event weighs heavy on their ego, and under a cloud of depression they simply cannot cope. They become suicidal and convince themselves that their family is better off dead. The family annihilator who also commits suicide that is older, over the age of 55, is usually deeply depressed, and controlling. Typically this group of perpetrators show many warning signs such as social withdrawal, mood swings, depression, loss of interest in usual activities, or mentioning of hopelessness. Usually a triggering event such as a spouse's declining physical or mental health, marital conflict or even discussion of divorce. The study concluded that the majority of murder-suicides by a family member is not about devotion or love, it's about desperation, depression and control. In many of the cases the person wants to die but doesn't want anyone living on happily without them. In other words if he or she can't be happy then nobody will ever be happy. Charles Gillard coldly pointed a gun at each of his three small children and pulled the trigger, killing them. Then he shot his wife to death. It's unclear if this was triggered by possibly his wife threatening to leave or something else. There's no excuse for what he did. He was selfish and disgusting. He's a monster, who deserves far more than any punishment our judicial system can dish out. Hopefully his fellow prisoners will find out he's a baby killer and brutalize him daily. May Dawn, Caitlin, Ronald, and Joshua all rest in peace. That concludes this episode. Keep your eye out for the next volume, coming soon. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Want to help support the channel you love, and get something in return? Simply purchase some Elizabeth's Chronicles merch. We have coffee mugs, t-shirts, sweatshirts, cozy blankets, beach towels, phone covers and more. Use the coupon code EC10OFF4U and get 10% off your order. The link to order is in the description area below this video. Thanks for helping Elizabeth's Chronicles continue to make the videos you love.